extra time on my hands today and I thought I would organize my nose work supplies. So even though I'm not currently teaching or judging any trials, it was just one of those things that I could get done on a rainy Saturday with nothing else to do. Um, so I thought it might be interesting for you guys to see what's in my kit, what I bring with me to class and what I bring with me to judge. Um, this might be useful if you're just starting out in the sport or if you've been around for a while but you're looking at building up your kit and getting some cool little things to add to your collection of nose work supplies or if you're thinking maybe one day you'd like to be a judge and what are the kinds of things that judges think about as far as their kits and supplies go, um, this might be for you. So the first thing I'll show you guys is my hot kit, my odor kit. Um, I carry it around in a tote bag so that I can uh, carry it without having to touch my actual odor things. Um, this gets very sticky and very stinky and uh, I don't like it to contaminate a whole lot of stuff. So I put it in a kind of a disposable bag just so I can toss that when it gets really smelly. Um, I have my actual jars of odor, my actual bottles of odor in this um, case. It's pretty secure. The uh, bottles are glass and they're protected by the foam that's in here. Um, and I have one bottle for every odor for AKC. And I also have the UKC odors in here. Um, the other thing I have in here is one of these plastic pop-up containers. And I use this to store um, soiled scent vessels. So all of these have had odor in them and they're just waiting to be cleaned. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting about this is that over time, coming into contact directly with um, Q-tips with oil on it has actually kind of eaten through the plastic in some places. It's actually kind of um, melted the plastic almost. So it kind of shows you that these oils really are something we have to be careful with, not only because our dogs love to smell them, but because they can actually, over time, do some damage to surfaces if they're put in direct contact with them. Um, so I have a bunch of used scent vessels in here. Eventually I'll get around to cleaning these, but that's not something I really enjoy doing. How I clean my scent vessels is quite easy. Um, you remove the Q-tips and discard those safely. I then rinse everything in distilled white vinegar, just because I think that helps to get some of the um, actual grease from the oil off of the surfaces. And then in hot water with Dawn soap, I'll rinse those two or three times, and then I leave them out in the sun to dry. Now, the, it does not make the hot scent vessels ever cold again. They will always be hot, but they'll be something that I can recirculate as a hot scent vessel for practice or giveaway for training to students. Um, so that's my actual odor, but I keep my prepared Q-tips in one of these Pelican cases. So this is where I have my half Q-tips that have been scented. Um, and I usually have a pretty good collection of these going. I also keep a pair of tweezers in here. Um, I have one box like this that I use for AKC, and then I have another box for UKC um, that has the five odors in there. My virgin anise are bigger because I go through those the most, obviously. Um, but you can still fit a fair number of Q-tips in the smaller jars as well. Um, and this is pretty airtight and it does keep them quite safe. And the other thing in here is a box of gloves. So that's everything that I keep in my scent kit. And now this is all the stuff that I keep in my classroom box. This is all the stuff that I need to teach. And anytime I judge and have the opportunity to bring my stuff with me, this absolutely has to come with me. I kind of say that this is my doomsday kit for nose work, that if I had to put on a trial with no notice, I could have everything I need in just this kit. So let me show you what I have in here. This is actually a little craft box that I bought at Joanne's Fabric, um, but it works for me. So the first category of things that I have are, um, different kinds of tape, and I have um, six different kinds of tape in here. I have regular um, clear tape for taping up boxes. I have duct tape because this is probably the thing you'll use the most when you're building your kit. If something won't stick to a surface with duct tape, you need to find a different surface. 
Um, I have three different colors of this thin masking tape. Um, green, red, and black. The black I like to use for um, sometimes placing hides. It can be a little less obvious if you're using like a black scent vessel and a black Q-tip. You can use some black tape too to really camouflage that hide. That comes in very helpful. Red and green I like to use for boundary markers. I especially like to use green tape on the ground for start lines. Um, and red is a good boundary marker as well. And of course, blue tape. Um, I like to have the different colors of tape if I can, especially if I'm subdividing a really large room into different um, classes, into different levels. I might say, okay, novice class, you're the green tape, advanced class, you're the red tape, and uh, master class, you're the blue tape. I might say something like that, just so people have a very definite idea of where their boundaries are. Um, the other things that I keep in here, um, this is a bunch of these little OXO clips. These are magnetized little clips, and these are good to have on hand. They're great for holding um, scent vessels, um, like a little Q-tip. They can be magnetized to hold that. You can also use them when you're practicing the upper levels of HD for AKC. They can hold on to um, the cotton balls really nicely, so I have some of these in here for practice. Um, I have a small bag of gloves, just because you can never have too many gloves. Um, I have some isopropyl alcohol pads, which I don't use too often, but every once in a while, if I feel like a surface either is kind of dirty or sticky and something won't adhere to it, you can usually wipe it off with a little one of these pads and it kind of makes your tape stick to it. Also, if I feel like a surface may have gotten contaminated and that's not something that I can easily clean, I can wipe it off really quickly with an isopropyl alcohol pad. It's something I can easily keep with me. Um, I have bug spray because it's Texas and I hate mosquitoes. I have a tape measure because that is absolutely a necessity. Um, I have Purell just in case some contamination happens and I can't wash my hands immediately. This is the next best thing you can do. Um, I also have some pipettes. And pipettes are what I use to actually scent my Q-tips. Um, I'll pop off those little dripper tops off of the uh, essential oil bottles and fill one of these up. And that's how I do my two drops of oil per Q-tip for AKC. I also think it wastes less oil that way. So I have some pipettes. The other thing I have in this section are just some Ziploc bags in case you need to send something home with somebody. If I make up an odor um, to send home with somebody in a tin, I can put it in there and give it to you to take home. Um, this little section has a collection of glue dots, which are one of the best ways to stick a scent vessel to a surface. They hold really well and um, they don't make a huge mess and they don't really get in the way. So they're very, a very handy little uh, thing to keep in your kit. I love glue dots. I have a little notebook in here, especially when I'm teaching a lot of classes in one day. I can hardly ever remember where I put the hide, especially if I'm changing it for every person. So I have a little notebook in here where I can write cheat sheets and write down running orders and little notes to myself. So that comes in handy. Um, this next part is scent vessels. So this little um, Tupperware here has some of those strong uh, little earth magnets if I need to put those in tins. I have a box of clean Q-tips. These do not have odor in them. And I have regular Q-tips. I haven't cut them. Um, I have scissors in my kit, so I can cut them if I need to. I also keep some of these little um, small Q-tips with pointy edges. They're smaller in diameter than regular Q-tips, and these work really well for water hides, especially. Um, I have some various types of scent vessels here. I have these little things that look like lip balm tins that have holes in the tops and magnets on the bottom. These are very nice. Um, I have various colors and shapes and sizes of metal tins. I don't use metal tins a lot when I practice because I don't like to have to clean them. Also, they're quite expensive, so I try not to have to spend a lot of money when I teach. So this is one of the ways that I can do that is by being very frugal with these. 
I prefer the slidey kind because I think they're easier to get on and off with gloves in your hand than the screw top kind. So that's one of the things I've had to learn the hard way. The other thing that's down here is this little Tupperware has my scent vessels in it. Um, when I'm teaching and even when I'm judging, I mostly use cut straws as my scent vessels because they are easy, they are disposable, and they're very discreet. It's very easy to hide a clear piece of two inches of straw compared to a tin. Um, I can be much sneakier with this than I can with that. I typically have three different colors of straws with me. I have clear, brown, and black. Sometimes I'll use whatever color is most appropriate to camouflage the hide. Um, and sometimes I will put different colors in each, um, different scents in each color to kind of help me remember what odor I put where. Uh, I've collected various different kinds of tins over the years. Um, these are lipstick balm tubes. I have some of these little centrifuge tubes which need to have holes in them if they don't. Um, there is a heat shrink tubing, which is really nothing different than an expensive straw. Um, I have some of these cool little, these are really neat. These are metal magnetized tubes and they are a little tricky to work with. Um, you have to cut your Q-tip to be a very specific size to fit in here but they have a very strong magnet in them and these can be very discreet especially if you're working out on like a playground or something where you don't have a lot of ways to conceal an odor these are just about as good of a way to conceal something like that as you can get they're a little more durable than the straws and they already have a magnet in them so they're not much different than a straw but they do come in handy most of my scent work vessels and my supplies i order from k9nwsource.com um, Jane does a great job of sourcing really cool little objects and having a great stock um, and I love her business. I think she's done a great job. I've used her for years. The last thing in my bucket is a little pencil bag of office supplies and this is the part that I have to be quite anal about making sure everything gets replaced because if you find you need a pen or um, some other kinds of adhesives and you don't have one you're, you're going to be in a bad way. Um, so I have my class passes and my business cards in here. I have post-it notes which come in handy uh, when you judge UKC your containers can be labeled with post-it notes and you don't always have those. Um, I have museum putty which is another kind of adhesive but it kind of that's melty and sticky, so I keep it in a plastic bag in here. I have scissors, which have come in handy numerous times when no one else at a trial seems to have any, and also to cut your Q-tips. A hole punch for punching cards, a clicker, just in case. Um, my name tags for my various organizations, UKC, EKC, Austin K9 Central. Um, I have a smoke pen in here. Um, which I do have on hand, although I don't have a lighter in here right now, so that's not all that useful. I have some 3M tabs. Um, I don't use these a lot to judge with because I find them to be a little tricky and finicky, but you never know when you're going to need something. And then the last thing I have are some Sharpies, some pens, and some dry erase markers. I keep dry erase markers and um, those plastic sheet protectors in my judging kit because if I'm judging a really big class, uh, let's say master buried hides, where you can have up to four hides and you may be running a lot of dogs through, I like to put a map in a plastic sheet and, and mark off when the dogs have found them. That kind of helps me to keep track of who's found what. So if I'm judging the fourth Labrador retriever in that class, I'm not confusing them. Um, especially when you get tired after you've been judging a long time, that helps. So that's all the stuff that I have in these containers and this is all the stuff that I would bring with me to class every time I teach. I don't leave home without it. Um, I have a few other things to show you and I'll show you those here in just a minute. Okay welcome to my laundry room. This is where I keep some runoff supplies 
and also where I store my kits. My dogs don't come in here a lot. It's not a place that they normally have access to because it's also where we store the dog food, but it is a safe place where I can store my um, kind of extra supplies if I need to replenish everything. So I have extra regular Q-tips and then I have um, these extra fancy Q-tips with the little pointy ends that I showed you. I have extra Expo pens, some scent vessels. These at one time uh, were probably used and they were probably hot so they stay in here so they don't get mixed back in with the clean stuff. And I have extra pipettes. I have my clean scent vessels for buried water hides. I have um, a label maker because labeling everything is very important and that's just the kind of person that I am. I have a um, vinegar solution bottle, which I'll use to spray down any of the hot bags or boxes or little articles that I use in class. I'll spray things down with vinegar and then let them sit um, either in here or outside or in the garage to kind of air out before I put them in the um, hot article storage. I have lots of extra odor in here. Um, I tend to order my odor from either Learbird or from Amazon and I like to have backups of everything. Um, I don't ever like to be in a position where I think I'm going to run out of birch. So I have lots of extras in here. Um, I also have my UKC kit in here and there's nothing in here now but one of the things that I'll also do with this is I will take my um, stale q-tips that have been in one kit and if I'm getting ready to judge a trial and I need to prepare new scent aids, I will take those stale Q-tips and put them in the other box so that I can put my freshly prepared Q-tips for trials in the box I'm taking with me that weekend. Um, so I never like to waste anything. Um, it's always good to practice on odor that has aged for different lengths of time or at different intensities. So I can always use these again, but I will make sure that the Q-tips that I'm bringing with me to a trial have been prepared according to that organization's regulations. Um, for AKC, that's two drops of odor prepared um, 24 hours or more in advance. Um, so I will do that for AKC and then put the rest in here to use for practice. Um, so that's everything that's in here. The last thing I'll show you is I keep my odor kit up here where it's not getting in the way. And then I keep my little box down here. So it's nice and safely guarded by a Bentley because that is also where we keep the dog food. So that's just another little area where I keep stuff. I also have my front bedroom, which is basically the nose work room, but that is not something I'm willing to show anyone who does not live in my house with me. So you'll just have to guess what that looks like. All right, the last thing that I want to show you is the tubs I bring specifically when I'm judging. So these are not things that come with me when I'm teaching, but if I'm judging, I bring this tote with me, which has my in case of emergency supplies with me. And um, I'll show you what's in here. Now, most of the time in judging contracts, it is laid out if the club will be providing the um, odor kit or if the judges will. Uh, if it's a local trial that I'm judging to, I will always bring my kit with me just because I have shown up to trials on more than one occasion where the club has forgotten the scent kit. So better safe than sorry, I always make sure I have at least the bare essentials with me in order to execute a trial because no one wants to have to be sent home to go locate birch. So this tote I keep packed up and ready to go for trials. Again, it's a good long while before I get to do that, but we can be prepared. So this is not stuff that I normally keep with me, but it's useful if you're thinking about hosting trials. So um, surveyor flags, extremely useful. Um, I have different kinds of cones. These are just cheap cones. These aren't as nice as clubs would be providing, but in case of emergency, they will suffice. I have bottles for a vinegar solution spray and also an enzymatic spray in case those things happen. Also, in case of emergency, I keep poop bags with me. I have some uh, new scent tins in here just because I don't carry a whole lot with me in my um, regular kit. Some judges only like to use these, so I always make sure I have a whole bunch with me just in case, even though I don't use them. I have an extra box of gloves. Um, I have, of course, copies of the regulations and the um, judges' guidelines. I have an empty pelican case. 
Um, this I don't use often, but I like to have with me in case I need a place um, to store used scent vessels or to transport my scent vessels from the hot room where the judges are preparing their odor to the um, trial location. So if I have to walk through an area with birch on me, I like to make sure I have it in here. Although most of the time I would just put it in my um, one that I keep with the jars in it, but you never know when you're gonna need another one. I have a backup tape measure because sometimes they get um, disappeared for a while. I have extra supplies of duct tape and masking tape because you cannot have too much of that. I also make sure that I bring my own clipboard with me because you'd be surprised at clubs that don't know that they need to provide clipboards and pens to you. Um, on this clipboard would be my own personal notes about the trial, which aren't necessarily the same thing as the score sheets or the running order or the things that the trial secretary would be providing you. Um, this would include things like my judge's notes um, for briefings, any um, diagrams or drawings that I've made of my search areas. Um, I always have a little piece of paper with post-it notes on it um, just because it's really easy for me to make a little note on that and stick that on top of the score sheet that I'm working on. Um, but this stays with me so I can put some kind of uh, covert information on here that I may not want competitors to see. I may not want this going back and forth to the secretary table. So this is my clipboard. The other thing I'll say is super important is I always make sure that everything has my name on it. This stuff disappears accidentally quite frequently. And um, most of the time it's because by the time you get to Sunday afternoon, by the end of the second trial, everyone is just ready to go home and it does help to make sure that your stuff is labeled. So everything that I have with me is labeled. Um, the last thing which I'm not gonna show you that I bring, would bring to a trial is a giant gray tote. It's probably this big by this big. And that is what I consider to be my hot box. So I use that for a couple of things and I've gotten a lot of use out of it. It's currently in the attic right now so it doesn't stink up the whole house. Um, you need a place to safely dispose of your gloves and all of my gloves can go in that tote. Um, you need a place to safely dispose of your scent vessels at a trial. They can all go in there. Sometimes I'll have a little um, Tupperware or something in there to throw them into so I can collect all the scent vessels and then wash them when I get back. Um, the other thing that's happened to me a few times is I will oftentimes be uh, in a room where I'm supposed to be, you know, using my odor kit, have all the judges stuff in one judge's room, and then there's no good way for me to bring the hot containers from that judge's room into the search area for containers without traipsing them through all of the exhibitors. So if I can fit them all in my big gray tote, I don't have to worry about somebody spying on me and seeing, oh, she's using that blue backpack. I don't have to worry about that if I can transport things from one place to another in my gray tote. It also helps if I can prepare them a little bit ahead of time, store them in the tote safely out of the way off in the distance, then I know that everything is safe and secure. No one's gonna to be touching it. No one's gonna be entering it. And that box is very nicely labeled with all kinds of warnings and admonishments not to touch it, do not open, this is hot, all of those kinds of things. Um, but you can never be too careful, especially if you have a trial with a lot of volunteers. People are trying to be helpful. When you're transitioning between levels, sometimes things get picked up or moved and you need to be able to be accountable for that stuff. So that's where the big gray tote comes in. Um, so that is most of my supplies that I would use for both teaching and judging. I hope you find this helpful if you're setting out on your nose work adventure. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.